In this video, we can discuss about the different ingredients or excipients which are used for the formulation of tablets. It's an important topic of formulative pharmacy of 5th semester B farm. What is mean by additives or excipients? As we all know, in addition to the active or therapeutic ingredients of the tablets, tablets also containing number of inert materials. The materials other than the active pharmaceutical ingredients is known as additives or excipients. Now what is the function of this additive or excipients? These are inept substances which are used along with the active pharmaceutical ingredients for their long term stabilization or maybe it for bulking up of the uh, tablets or to confirm or confer a therapeutic enhancement of dosage form. Now, additives or excipient can be classified into three, group one, two and three according to their uh, role in the formulation. So group one additives are substances which will help to impart the satisfactory processing and compression characteristic of a tablets. These include diluent, binders, gliden, lubricants and in group two these are substances which will help to give additional desirable physical characteristics. These include disintegrants, colors, flowers and sweetening agents for chewable tablets. And group 3, these are substances which are used in case of controlled release tablets, polymers or waxes or other solubility retarding materials are example for group 3 additives. Now coming to the first one, diluents. Diluents are the additives which are inert material which are added to the tablets to impart their bulk for potent drugs whose uh, dose is very very low and it can be used up to 5 to 80 percentage of the total weight. So diluents can be used to up to 5 to 80 percentage of the total weight of the tablets. Now what are the different ideal characters of a diluent? It should be non-toxic and it should be acceptable to all the regulatory agents in of the country in which the tablet is going to be marketed and it should be commercially available in acceptable grade with low cost it should be physiologically inert it should be physically and chemically stable it must not contraindicate by themselves or in combination with drugs it must be free from any unacceptable microbial loads it must be color compatible. It should not produce or it should not change the color uh, appearance. And it must have no deleterious effects in bioavailability. It should not de decrease the bioavailability of any tablets. Now, what are the different materials used as a diluent or fillers? First one is sugars like dextrose. Lactose, sucrose, amylose, mannitol, sorbitol or inositol. Then polysaccharide like starches, modified starches, cellulose, cellulose derivatives, microcrystalline cellulose. Then inorganic compound like calcium phosphate dihydrate, calcium sulfate dehydrate, calcium lactate trihydrate, calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, magnesium oxide, calcium triphosphate and miscellaneous compound like pendonate, polyvinyl pyrrolidone, kaolin or silicon derivatives. Now there are so many commercially available diluents which are commonly used. That important one is spray dried lactose. Advantages of spray dried lactose are they have good flow property. They are easily available, available in variable grades and not very costly and it is most compatible with most of the drug but it, it will prone to darkening or it will uh, change the color to yellow while on aging or in presence of moisture or in drug which containing amide groups and uh, in case of uh, spray dried lactose we have to use acid or neutral lubricating agents otherwise it will lead to darkening. Now, Directly compressible starches. There are so many directly compressible starches so that we don't have to add 
or we don't have to include binding agent or granulating agent for example is star rx1500 usually it is from stars cone and protecto and they are free flowing directly compressible starch and very good mechanical strength and good release and it is used as diluent binders as well as disinfectant so by using this directly compressible uh, starch we can uh, avoid the use of binding agents as well as disinfectants and next one is directly compressible starch is mtex and selutab these two are hydrolyzed starches containing 90 to 92% dextrose and 3 to 5% maltose and they are free flowing and directly compressible now another directly compressible starch is microcrystalline cellulose this is uh, mainly available in the name of avicil and these are directly compressible material and available in two grade ph101 as powder and ph102 as granules it is a good diluent and disintegrant but disadvantage is costlier now second additive which are used in the formation of tablet uh, preparation is binders or granulating agent or adhesive these are the agent which are used to increase the cohesive force between the ingredient of the sap tablets so that the tablet can be compressed easily but the concentration of binder should be used carefully as it will give a great influence on the property of the tablet so let's see what are the uh, influences if the concentration of binder increases it will reduce the disintegration and dissolution so what will happen it will reduce the dissolution and it will reduce the absorption of drug into the systemic circulation finally it will leads to the uh, decreasing bioavailability so there will be low availability if there is an increasing concentration of binders so what happen if uh, the concentration is decreased it will uh, defect in the compression and tablet will produce it without any hardness so what will happen it will get powdered during the packaging and transportation now let's see what are the different binders used acacia in 20 percentage it will give very hard and fragile granules gelatin 5 to 20 percentage will give uh, uh, strong adhesive and which is used in lozenges but uh, it will form gel in cold so in order to prepare binding agent we have to need a slight warming of gelatin now starch based most commonly used granulating agent and the cheapest granulating agent is starch based one 10 to 20 percentage and need to be a slight warming to get good result and trakaga 20 percentage it will give hard granules then liquid glucose 25 to 50 percentage solution it will give strong adhesive and it will soften in presence of moisture and sucrose solution 50 to 74 percentage solution can be used as a binder then celluloic solution 5 to 10 percentage is commonly used different polymers like hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose hydroxy ethyl cellulose and hydroxy propyl cellulose can be used as binding agents and then uh, in case of non aqueous granulation method we can use polyvinyl pyrrolidone 2 to 10 percentage as well as uh, the drugs which are sensitive to water can be uh, replaced with uh, binding agent ethyl alcohol ethanol and also syrup ip 66.66 percentage weight by weight can be used as a binder or granulating agent now third additive is anti-frictional agents these are agents which are used to uh, in, uh, decrease the frictional force between the dye granules as well as punches so there are three type of anti-frictional agent lubricating agent gliden and anti-adhesive now let's see what is lubricants lubricants are used for the comfortable ejection of the tablet from the punching machine without sticking to the dye wall by reducing the friction between the wall of tablets as well as wall of dye so usually added at the last stage after the granulation stage only we will add uh, lubricating agent 
now let's see what are the lubricating agent it is again classified into two uh, insoluble and soluble lubricating agent first one is soluble lubricating uh, lubricating agents are examples are stearic acid uh, calcium magnesium zinc stearate then liquid paraffin 5 percentage sodium benzoate 5 percentage sodium lauryl sulfate 0.5 to 5 percentage then tall hydrogenated vegetable oil polyethylene glycol light mineral oil paraffin polytetrafluoroethylene glycine palmito stearate are another example for insoluble lubricating agents now coming to the soluble lubricating agent sodium benzoate sodium chloride leucine or carbovax 4000 magnesium stearate most commonly used lubricating agent but it have an disadvantage it will retard the disintegration and dissolution so in order to overcome this dis, uh, disadvantage uh, overcome this advantage we can include sodium lauryl sulfate as uh, surfactant to increase the wetting property also adipic acid glycerol triacetate magnesium lauryl sulfate polyethylene glycine polyoxymethylene monosterate sucrose monolaurate or sodium lauryl sulfate can be used as an lubricating agent next one is anti adherence so these are uh, lubric anti frictional agent which are used for the purpose of reducing sticking or adhesion of any of the tablet ingredient or powder to the faces of punch so example are talc magnesium stearate starch and colloidal silica are example for anti adherent and third one is glyden these are the anti frictional agent which are used to enhance the flow property of granules or powder by reducing the friction between the particles so that the granules do not stick each other examples are colloidal silica 0.1 to 5 percentage most common and excellent glyden property and talc 1 to 2 percentage and cornstarch are used as an glyden now next additive is disintegrants disintegrants these are used for the purpose of breaking the tablet when introduced into a biological system then uh, examples of disintegrants are starch clay celluloid alginate gum etc there are two methods for the incorporation first method the entire uh, disintegrating agent can be added before the granulation with the diluents or the second method the major portion before the granulation and rest of the portion before the compression along with the lubricating agents now the disintegrating agents will act by different mechanism by swelling uh, examples of disintegrating agent which will act by swelling are alginate starch dye polyvinyl pyrrolidone acacia tracagan corcum and by wetting sodium lauryl sulfate clay and bentonite then effervescence like sodium bicarbonate and citric acid capillary action microcrystalline cellulose sodium starch glycolate insoluble cationic exchange resins cross linked carboxymethyl cellulose and sodium carbonate glycine then enzymatic cellulose cellulase and amylase enzyme now disintegrant which are used in tablets are alginic acid or sodium alginate 2 to 10 percentage microcrystalline cellulose which are also known as avicil as a brand name 10 percentage is used as a disintegrating agent sodium carboxymethyl cellulose or nimsil 1 to 20 percentage and starch 1 to 2 to 10 percentage or cornstarch uh, corn or potato starch so this starch can be used as a uh, diluent then binding agent and disintegrating agent so stage starch paste will act as a binding or granulating agent starch powder if we are added along with the active pharmaceutical ingredient it will act as diluent now if you are adding starch at the after the granulation and before the compression it will act as a uh, disintegrating agent now super disintegrants super disintegrants are the disintegrating agent which will disintegrate the tablet within one or two minutes so examples are cross carmelose which are cross linked cellulose cross povidone which are cross linked polyvinyl pyrrolidone and sodium 
starch glycolate which are cross linked starch and other materials which are can be used as and disintegrants are vicum methyl cellulose agar bentonite cellulose alginic acid corgum carboxymethyl cellulose next additive is adsorbent these are the substances which is intended in the formulation when there is a fluid ingredient such as eutectic mixture or liquid extract or essential oil is the as an additive then examples are silica which is the most commonly used uh, adsorbent which it can absorb up to 80 percentage of the water uh, by its own weight and it can still remain as free flowing then magnesium carbonate and magnesium oxide and magnesium aluminum tri uh, aluminum silicate that is hygroscopy polyethylene glycol macrocol 400 it's an volatile ingredient which is used to prevent the loss of volatile ingredient such as nitroglycerin then cross linked polyvinyl pyrrolidones next additives or excipient is coloring agents coloring agents are mainly used for uh, uh, three purposes disguising of off colored drugs and for for product identification and for for more elegant product now examples of coloring agent which can be used is titanium dioxide caramel uh, uh, then for the caramel other name is burnt sugar and brilliant blue ffs fcf are some examples of coloring agents next additive or excipient is flavors or sweetening agents these are limited to chewable tablets or other tablets which are intended to dissolve in the mouth to mask the bad taste and pleasant odor etc examples are sugar or mannitol 72 percentage as uh, sweet as sucrose cooling and mouth filling effect are also there for mannitol then saccharin it's an artificial sweetener with 500 times sweeter than the sucrose but uh, it has a bitter after taste as well as this is carcinogenic so this is banned then cyclamate uh, it is usually used alone or either with saccharin but it is also banned due to carcinogenic effect aspartame or sir which are widely replacing the saccharin and main disadvantage is lack of stability in presence of moisture so these are the flavoring agents or sweetening agents so that is all about the excipient or additives used in the tablet manufacturing so these are some questions seen in the question paper write short on excipient used in the tablet formulation write a note on disintegrants or disintegrating agents write a note on diluent or filler or write a note on granulating agents hope it is clear thank you for watching this video